Hello and welcome to Wigs with Liz. My name's Liz and I wear wigs and today I'm going to be sewing some wig clips into my freshly washed Zara wig. So I did a review on this the other day and talked about this and I washed it the other night and while I was washing it because of my own you know not sewing these in properly because obviously I'm still learning I'm getting much better now while I was washing it the wig clips became very loose so this one kind of came out all together and this one just needs tightening up so what my intention is for this video is to sew the wig clips back in with you so that's what we're going to do and thank you for being here sending you so much love so this is my gorgeous Zara wig she's a curly short style and she is freshly washed so I washed her with my Cinovation shampoo and conditioner and she's come out wonderful she is a a wig from um, Godiva Secret Wigs and this gorgeous colour, this reddy brown is called Cinnamon Toast so she's beautiful. So she deserves to have a moment spent on her sewing in the wig clips and obviously I've been showing you how I do this, I've had to teach myself and I'm getting quite good. So I have done a few videos where I've been showing you me sewing in the wig clips and it's been about trial and error as things always are when we get to know something and start to do something new. But I treated myself to some decent scissors because I was trying to do it with just some normal scissors and it wasn't working. So I bought some craft sewing scissors, which are working much better now. So as you can see, this one's hanging out. So the first thing I want to do is get the get the, the grip, get the clip out of the wick without damaging it. So, you know, maybe this has happened to you that you've sewed one in and, and then it's come out or, you you know, you haven't sewn it in enough. So I'm just going to get them out. We're going to have a fresh slate or a fresh cap to work with. So that's one out. And this one is very loose. So, you know, I'm just going to take it out and put it in again because I want it to be secure. I don't want it coming out. And I don't actually think it's me washing the wig that's made it come out. I think it's just the fact that I didn't sew them in properly. Or I didn't sew them in secure enough because they did work for a while, but they just weren't secure enough. So... With you see, as you can see with Zara, she's got a left part, you know, she's got monofilament on the left, so she creates this lovely left party. So I don't want to go near this at all. What I'm going to do, and she's got a gorgeous lace front as well, so I'm going to put a wig clip there and a wig clip there. So I'm going to put two in this wig. One would probably be enough, but I'm going to put two in to give it that added security. And obviously you can wear them with a wig band. I'm wearing Billy right now with a wig band because I haven't yet sewed wigs into um, clips into this gorgeous wig, but I will do. But I just feel that they sit nicer with wig clips in. You know, they feel fresher to me, you know, and more natural. Because, and I suppose less warm too, because, you know, it's sun shining today. It's a gorgeous day. If I went out with a wig band on, you know, I may just get a little bit warm because I've got that added, added you know, thing on my head, whereas if I've got clips in, then I've just got a wig on my head and that's it. So we're going to sew them in together. So these are the wig clips. Now, I got these from Amazon. Okay, I got a pack of these just like that. Okay, you get 50 in a pack. And, you know, if you want to know which I get, um, if you go to my Amazon wish list and you have a look down there, you'll find them. Okay, I've put them on there. So they're not very expensive at all. They've got like a little gripper, like a rubber on one side and then on the other side they've got you can see that the full teeth so when you're putting them in the wick you want them facing towards you with the rubber down and the teeth towards you and then you check it before you do it just in case you get a faulty one they rock back and forth so they're not going to hurt your hair you know they're very kind of gentle on the hair I'd say you can't even tell you've got them in when you've you're wearing them so, but they're very secure too. Now they've got three holes on either side. So they've got three on the left, three on the right. They've got two top holes and then you've got a gold hole at the bottom. Now I'm not going to mess with that gold hole. I'm just going to sew in the first two because it gives it that extra leeway. So I'm going to put the first one about there. Can you see? The first one about there. And then I'm not going anywhere near this lace front because I don't want to damage the lace. So when the it's going to sit about there. It's going to sit a little bit further back than your hairline. So, you know, on this wig, if I part this wig, I've got my hairline there. So the grip, the clip's going to sit about there. Okay, that looks quite pretty, actually. That looks quite pretty, don't you think? But I like it with a chunky bang in this wig. So I'll just put this fringe right there. 
So we're going to sew the first one in. So the first thing we have to do is set up our needle. Now, to me, this is the most fiddly bit because I'm not very good anyway with sewing and needles and patience and things like that. So I cheat with the way I do it. So first of all, I've got my white cotton. So that's my first cheat. I use white cotton. If I use brown cotton, which matches the wig, which you should do, I couldn't see that. So I'm gonna use white cotton and I can see what I'm doing. The second sheet I've got for you is I use a magic needle. Now, I don't know why it's magic. I've inherited this from my mom. To me, it's a pretty fiddly needle, but apparently it's a magic needle and it does work. So there you go. And then the third tip is I use a magnifying glass. Now, my magnifying glass has got light on, also something I inherited from my mom. And I've got a cat. You, know, you might think, well, that cat's cute, Liz. I use this cat on my other channel, Guided by Angels, to hold up my cards because I'm also a psychic reader. My wigs are my passion on the side. So I'm going to get my cat and I'm going to turn my magnifying glass on. And the cat holds up the magnifying glass. And I'm going to use this to thread my needle because it's the threading of the needle that I find the most time consuming. So here we go. But do you know what the reward is when you've done this? Putting your wig on, which I'm really excited about, which we're going to do together. And then I'm going to show you, show you Zara. I'm going to sew Zara, but I'm going to show you Zara freshly washed because I haven't put it on since I've washed it. I just see her looking lustrous and lovely. So I'm going to thread my needle, first of all, she says. Try and thread my needle. I can see what I'm doing. Sometimes I do it first time, other times it takes me a while, so do bear with me. These videos are more about getting to know each other and having fun and connecting and obviously getting the job done. So I've got the two sides, which I'm going to pull down now. Oh, a bit too far, nearly pulled it out. You see the two sides there and they are going to create a loop as well when you're sewing, which helps to secure the wick or the clip in the wick. So pull it down about there, hold it with your fingers at the bottom. And then I'm going to put the needle between my thumb and forefinger and I'm going to wrap the cotton around one, two, three, four, five and pull it down to make a knot. And that will secure the cotton and the clip into my wick. Now, there is some excess cotton. Can you see that there? Now, these scissors work well. So now I'm going to cut them off at the bottom. So it's not going to make such a mess now in the wick because I've learned through trial and error how to do it. So we're going to sew the first side of the, the clip in, the right hand side, and then I'm going to cut the cotton off tight, and then I'm going to thread my needle again and do the other side, instead of using one piece of cotton to do the whole thing, because I'm finding that they're more secure that way. So I'm going to put the clip in where I want it to be, where I just showed you, there, and I'm going to make sure I hold it really tight with my thumb, just to make sure it's not going to move around, because... I did do that once I didn't hold it secure enough and then I sewed in the clip wonky and had to do it all again and you don't want to be doing that so I get my thread and my needle and I go in down into a little piece of the wig and then I come up through the first hole can you see that okay and then I'm going to pull it up through the first hole and then I'm going to go in again little bit of wig you don't need much at all and go into the wick and then pull it up. Now, as I'm doing it, can you see the two pieces of cotton have kind of gone into a loop there? So I'm gonna go around that piece of cotton, which makes it even more secure and it makes it tight. Now for luck, we're gonna do it again. So we're gonna go in three times for luck. Just make sure I haven't gone through to the wig there. Sometimes I can get carried away with these and I go in too far. You only need a little bit of wick. And that's secure. So I'm going to go in now, down again, a little bit of wig, and go in through the second hole. Pull it up. And again, through a little bit of wig, and through the second hole, pull it up. And on that time, I'm going to go back in and loop it so it's tight. And then I'm going to do one more for luck. A little bit of wig, and then up. So down, and then up through the second hole. And that's tight now. That's tight. So I'm going to cut that off. And then I'm going to take the two ends of the cotton like this and I'm going to tighten a knot three times. So we've got to secure that side. So we've got one, we've got two and we've got 
three. There we go. And then I'm going to cut off the excess cotton. Wow, done it. So we've got one side done, so that's secure. Okay, so now I need to do the whole thing again and thread my cotton. So that's the most important fiddly bit. I'm not doing too bad today, actually. Are you proud of me? Quite proud of myself that I'm sewing. So let's cut the cotton off. Cotton, cotton, can't even speak today, perimenopause. Get my cat, magnifying glass. You know, if you can do this without a magnifying glass, then my hat goes off to you. So much respect to you. You know, for all you avid sewers out there, you know, I have to use the magnifying glass and I'm so glad I've got one. So I'm going to thread my needle again, she says. Get it a bit. Sometimes I don't hold it tight enough and then I'm chucking the, the needle all around here and not actually going through the hole. This is, as I said, this is what I find the most challenging bit that I've done is to actually thread the needle, especially on camera and you're thinking, oh, you're on a timey, you're on a clock. People are thinking, what are you doing? But we just take a time and it's all good. So I'm going to get the two pieces. I'm just going to do it here so I can see what I'm doing to get the two pieces equal. There we go. And then I'm going to pull it down again. And I'm going to hold the needle between my thumb and forefinger and wrap it around five times. One, two, three, four, five. And pull it down to get that trusty sturdy knot there that's going to make everything work wonderfully. And then that little bit of excess cotton below the knot there. It's only a tiny bit, but, you know, to make it a bit more, you know, easier to sew and so it doesn't get in the way and so it looks better, I'm going to cut that little bit off. So now we're going to go in and do the other side. So again, I need to make sure I'm holding it in the right place. So I just double, double check before I even start sewing it that it's in the right place on the wick, which means it's, you know, not ski whiff pretty much. So I'm holding it in. I'm taking it around the other way. I'm going to get my needle and my cotton and I'm going to go down, take a little tiny bit of wig and then go up through the first hole and go do it again. There we go, and pull it tight, and then one more time for luck, and then on that one I'm going to go through and thread it through. So again, you can see how tight it is. So I'm sorry you can't see exactly what I'm doing, but you get the general idea. So I'm going to go down again, tiny bit of wig, pull through the, the second hole, pull it tight, same again, and then it come off automatically. Sometimes they do because it's a magic needle. So that's enough, you know. So I'm going to cut the two pieces and then I'm going to do my three knots. And the first one looks pretty secure to me. I'm excited to put this wig on. So I'm going to tie one, two, three times a lady. Couldn't help myself there. I went to see a Lionel tribute band not long ago in my um, Raspberry Ice Candy Swig that we cut bangs in and, and we sew wig clips in. That was when I did a little short. That's what we went to see was really good. So now I've got this big piece of cotton hanging off. I'm going to cut that off. And it looks really good. So if you've seen my other wig clip sewing videos, you'll realise now how much better I'm getting. Look at that. Much better. Not an eyesore as much as the other one. So we can move it up and down. It's in very, very secure, that one. So that one's in perfectly. Now for the second one... Check it works. Rubber at the bottom, teeth towards you. It's going to go in that way. Okay, so I'm not going to sew it the same way as I've sewed the other one because I want the wig facing in towards me and I want the teeth towards me. That's the best way to know how to do it. So whenever, wherever you are sewing your wig, front or, or the back or, you know, the bottom or the top, make sure the teeth are facing towards you and the rubber is down and then you always know you get it in the right place. So that one is going to sit about there because then it's going to give me the added security, one at the front and one at the top. So I can just clip them both in. So let's get the needle and thread going. Let's get the needle and thread going. So again, I do tend to waste quite a bit of cotton doing this as well. But, you know, it's all good. It's all good. We have to learn. So get my magnifying glass and don't break it, Liz. Because it is special because it was my mum's. So I get my thread and I'm going to thread my needle. Thread my needle. Oh, I've got the shakes today. It's I'm hot today. 
So obviously, you know, I'm going through menopause. So I'm having one of them shaky days. Get it in. Oh, I'm, I'm shaking today. I think it's, it's definitely because I'm hot. I don't know why I'm so hot today. I'm having a hot flash. Let me take this off because that's in the way. Okay, let's do it again. Have I got it through? No, take your time. Take your time and get it through. I'm so excited to be able to, you know, do these wig videos. I've done it and, you know, sew these wig clips in. I just love, love, love it. So, and it is fiddly. You know, it is fiddly doing this as well. So you have to take your time. You have to take your time. I haven't put much cotton on there at all, to be honest. Probably needed a bit more, but never mind. So I'm going to take it as far down as I can go. And then I'm going to one, two, three, four, five it. Make my knot. I'll see if it, it does it or I have to do it again. So there we go. So I'm going to cut off the bottom below the knot there just to make it. You know, so there's not loads of cotton hanging at the ends. So my cotton and my needle's ready to go. So I'm going to get my next one. And I'm going to put it, as I said, with the teeth down and the rubber at the bottom facing towards me. And I'm going to get it where I want it on the wig, first of all. That's the most important thing. So I know where I want it. There is a bit of Zara hanging out through this cap. I'm just going to get rid of that. You know, because I washed it and obviously it's... Still a little bit fly away from, from washing it. So we just move that out of the way. It's like come through the cap a little bit, can you see? So it needs to go back through the cap, wherever it is. That's why you just have to be a bit time consuming with these. I'll do that after actually. Just put it to one side so it's not going to get in the way there. So I'm going to get it where I want it to sew it, about there. And then I'm going to get my needle. I'm going to go down through a little bit of wig little bit of wig and then come up through the first hole on the right go down again a little bit of wig come up again and one more for luck on this side and then I can loop it that time as well and then on the second hole go down get a little bit of wig a little tiny bit of wig and the second hole and go down again a little bit of wig and the second hole, loop it through because I can on that time. So I can get it. It's very fiddly, very fiddly. And then another one for luck. So I've done that three times, both sides. You probably only need to, but I'm doing it three times. Then I've got that added security there. So I'm going to take both sides. I've just cut off there. Can you see? And I'm going to do a three knotter. So one, one, it's very fiddly. You know, I've got no patience with things like this. Two, three times a lady. There we go, I've got it. And then I'm just going to cut off the excess cotton. Both sides, I've got a little bit of cotton hanging off this side too. So done that side then. So now I just need to do the other side. So it hasn't taken that long. 18 minutes, we're getting better. It took me 40 minutes on one video. So we're getting better. I'm getting quicker, which shows practice makes perfect. It's threading the needle that takes the time. And that's why you need, you know, to be able to see what you're doing. That's why I'm using a magnifying glass. My neighbours always watch me, you know. I've got people across the road. And she's looking at the, out the window right now. So she probably thinks, what's that woman doing? Talking to herself sewing something i love it so let me try and thread. i need to do the other side you know when your cotton is kind of in two pieces you know you want it to be in one sturdy piece so let's get this threaded through i can't believe i'm shaking it's because i'm hot i'm like Ooh. it's not nerves i'm not nervous i'm just hot wearing a wig and I think the heating might be on, even though the sun's out as well. Because I've been drying some washing in the house. So instead of taking it outside, I've been drying it in the house, which isn't good, is it really? But let's thread it. Well, we nearly had her then. And then she did that thing where she went into two pieces. Let me just check I can do this one. 
yeah just need to cut a little bit off at the end you know when it does go that way even though you can't see at all until you look under the magnifying glass it kind of makes two bits of cotton instead of one and that doesn't thread through properly so i've done it i've got it by jove you've got it liz there you go that was very english of me there and if you're wondering where I am in the UK, I'm from a place called Staffordshire, Stoke on Trent. But we've moved now. So the place we're living in now is actually classed as Newcastle Underline, which is very close to Burslem, which is where Robbie Williams the singer was born. So I'm from the same place that Robbie the singer was born. I'm loving angels instead. So I'm going to pull it down. Oh, see, that's me talking and not concentrating. Let's do it again. I don't want to thread the needle again. So I'm going to pull it down so I've got both sides equal and then I'm going to wrap it round one, two, three, four, five and make my trusty knot. There you go. So yeah, Robbie sometimes comes and switches on the Christmas lights here and things in the town centre of Hanley. I'm going to cut the excess off and I'm ready to go. So yeah, it's great that, you know, so if you're wondering what my accent sounds like, it's like Robbie Williams. So I'm proud to be a Stokey. Oh, yes. So I'm going to make sure that I've got the other side where I want it and it's not going to sew in lopsided. So I've got it about right, which is about there. So I want it to be lopsided on the cap. So I've got it where I want it, about there. Yeah, that's perfect for me. So I'm going to start again. Okay, so I'm going to go in a little bit of wig and come up through the top hole and then go down again and up through the top hole. So much faster I am at this now. And then I'm going to do one more for look. And then on that time, I'm going to go through and thread it in a loop. So that's very sturdy, that side. And then the second hole, I'm going to go down a little bit of wig and then come up through the second hole. Go down again, a little bit of wig. Up again. And then we're going to do one more for look. A little bit of wig and up again. There we go. And that's secure. I can feel how secure it is already. So I'm going to cut my two sides off. I'm going to put my needle somewhere safe where I know where it is. So I don't stick myself with this or put it through my thumb like I did before. And then I'm going to tie in one, two, three times a lady, three knots. And then I'm going to cut off the excess cotton a little bit more. And we're good to go. There we go. So we've got the three, the three, the two wig clips in. Very sturdy into my freshly cleaned and washed wig. So let's put her on. So I'm super excited. So we just get all this cotton out of the way here. So thank you for bearing with me as I did that. It took 23 minutes and four seconds. Wow. So I'm going to take Billy off. So I am going to be reviewing Billy. Okay. So you can check out Billy's review. Okay. Talking about Billy. And I'm going to take my wig band off because I don't need it anymore because I'm putting Zara on and I'm going to prep my hair. So my hair is just like this and I'm going to pull it back into a low ponytail. I've got a little band. I'm going to tie it round three times. One, two and on the second time I'm just going to put it into a low bun like that and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to get Zara ready now. So this is Zara. Obviously she's being freshly washed so I have no idea how it's going to be when I put it on for the first time after washing it. So we're doing this together. So I'm just kind of, you know, giving her a slight little, you know, kind of play with my fingers. I don't want to mess around with the curl too much because she's so beautiful. And get her about right at the front. And then I've got that little piece of hair. It's like a stray hair that's come through the bottom of the wig. So I want to get rid of that. I want to get rid of that. There we go. Okay. So, oh, it's still there. Okay, how am I going to get that out? Let me see. I'm just going to tighten up the straps at the bottom as well because obviously I've washed it. So I'm going to get the, the leather like little bra straps at the bottom. I'm going to pull them a little bit just to give me that added security at the bottom. And I'm just going to pull it like that. So she's ready to go anyway. So everything else. So there's a little bit of hair. Can you see it? I'm going to show it to you. See that hair there? How am I going to get that back through the wig? Trial and error. I'm going to push it through. Ah, I think I've just done it. 
That's how you do it, then you push it through. Fabulous, right. So I'm going to undo my clips and then I'm going to show you how I'll put her on. So straight away, same as normal, about there, put it in as if you're pulling it, a bucket on your head. So I'm going to go up at the back and I'm going to find the tabs and I'm going to pull them down flat. And then I've got it about where it was. So you pull it up and as you pull it up, the wig clips clip in. So I've got it about right, it's about my hairline there. And then as you eat snap in, and then I'm going to put my thumbs underneath the other bit where the wefting is and clip the other one in. So she's now clipped in. Look at it. Honestly, this is so amazing. This is my freshly washed Zara wig from Godiva Secret Wigs. This is what it looked like when it come brand new. So washing it's perfect. I mean, obviously, you know, you could say, well, she's a bit curly, Liz. I like it like this, but you can make it however you want. You can boof it up or you can pat it down. See, isn't she stunning? So really happy that I've washed her. Oh, she smells so fresh. She smells like when you've done your washing and out, you put it outside, not in the house like me. You put it outside and it smells like fresh air. That's what my wig smells like. So I really can, you know, recommend the products that I'm using, which is Cinovation shampoo and, you know, leave-in conditioner. But I talked about that on the other video. So this is Zara, washed and fresh with wig clips in, all ready to go out on the town. Amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.